Okay, now it's tripped people out when I've said that the first time you walk in the door of AA, you worked all 12 steps just by walking in the door. And uh, people are like, how's that even possible? Well, let me break it down. It's pretty simple. First step, we admitted we were powerless over alcohol. Our lives had become unmanageable. Well, when you walked in the door, you realized, yeah, you know, you got a major problem with alcohol. You can't control it. Maybe you've tried other routes, like it says in the big book, you know, switching to natural wines, only drinking on the weekends, uh, you know, uh, swearing with and without the solemn oath. I'm guilty of that. Uh, I swear on the Bible, you know, and uh, your life's unmanageable. Nobody comes in there saying, man, you know, my life is so manageable and I've got no issue with alcohol. AA is where I want to chill, you know. So you have that certain degree of honesty to it, you know, which is actually the principle of it. Now, you don't know what the hell you're getting into, and you don't know uh, if this is going to help. Uh, and really, to the best of your ability, you're being as honest as you can. Uh, you know, keep in mind, the head is all messed up. You've got all these things going on in there, uh, bouncing around. And, uh, but this is what the best of your ability with what you got walking in the door came to believe that a power greater than yourself could restore you to sanity. That's exactly what AA, it's power greater than yourself, you know, because you've tried other stuff. You know, maybe you went to church a few times. Uh, I know that uh, ex-wives told me if you drink again, I'm leaving you. They're ex-wives, so I, I didn't really listen to that. And, uh, you know, where they said, yeah, if you drink again, I'm going to take your, your kids away from you. Yeah, that, that didn't persuade me. I've lost a couple jobs due to drinking, and uh, so that didn't persuade me. You uh, know, so I came to believe that a power greater than myself, AA, could restore me to sanity. The uh, made decision to turn my will and my life over to the care of God as I understood him. Man, you know, made a decision, yeah, I, I, I'm walking in here. I don't know what it is. So maybe it was that moment of clarity. There was a guy talking to me the other day who said that uh, he was on his way to the liquor store. And while he was driving there, something told him, get on your phone and find an AA meeting. And so he did and wound up at the uh, the 3 o'clock meeting. And that was his first meeting. It was my pleasure to meet him. And, uh, you know, but he made a decision, right? In that moment of clarity, I I'm going to give this a shot. He didn't have to. And literally, we are in the middle of a street, you know, a, a, a one coming, one going street. And at the end of each road is a, uh, a, a gas station. They got booze in there. So literally to get to, to the meeting house, you have to pass by a liquor store. There's no other way around it. And uh, he managed to get past that final hurdle. And uh, so he made a decision to turn his car in his life over to this new prospect of God, which happens to be a good orderly direction. Uh, some people like to refer to it as group of drunks. A higher power can be whatever you want it to be, as long as it ain't you. Made a searching and fearless moral inventory of ourselves. Now everybody gets totally scared by this boogeyman, right? The elephant in the room, you know? Well, when I came in for the first time with honesty, did a spot check inventory. You know, I've just destroyed my marriage after 10 years of drinking. You know, my job, you know, is sure to come next. You know, my finances were in the toilet. I had no money. You know, so I did my first searching, you know, physical and fiscal inventory. My moral inventory was, I'm broken, and I just don't know what to do, and I'm scared shitless about what's about to come my way. You know? And so I'm going to do whatever I can to get out of this. Yeah, it's a short inventory. Yeah, it doesn't really follow the, you know, the, the columns that are in the big book, but it's something. There was something that brought each and every one of us in here. And, uh, you know, so the searching and fearless moral inventory... I keep destroying everything that I can. I don't know how to stop. And uh, I can't stop drinking. There's my inventory. That's about as good as it's going to get, considering I just walked in the door. 
and made to God to myself and to another human being the exact nature of my wrongs. Now, <clears throat> God already knows. The person walking in already suspects. But now they're sitting in a room full of people who will share their experience, strength, and hope and tell little bits of their story on what brought them in there. Because uh, that's really the only six things you're supposed to talk about in newcomers. Meaning is uh, what it was like, what happened, what it's like now, and share your experience, strength, and hope. That's it. Everything else is uh, is not needed. And, uh, you know, and a lot of times they'll sit there and they'll listen. But you can see the pain in their eyes. They don't even need to say anything, and you can see it. Uh, and I'm not talking about the people that have the, uh, the judicial higher power saying, hey, go sign that paper. A lot of times you can see they're broken too, but they're like, I don't want to be here. You know, so I'm not really referring to them so much, uh, even though this would apply. They don't think they have a problem, but their higher power sure does. Uh, we're entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of characters. You know, well, yeah, I mean, they're in there. They want all the problems to go away, you know, as what they understand them to be. You know, I can't stop destroying the people that I love and care about. I can't stop, you know, drinking or drugging. I can't stop self-destructing. I've been doing this a long time, and I'm still alive, so I'm failing at failing, you know, which is a pretty hard concept to grasp. Humbly asked him to remove my shortcomings. Oh, Lord, how many times have I had my hands around that toilet bowl and said, oh, God, please let the world stop spinning. I'll be a good boy tomorrow. You know, or when you're driving and, you know, you notice a cop behind you, you're like, please don't light me up with the cherries and berries. You know, you know, so you're praying for stuff, right? And sometimes there's those more honest prayers. God, I can't stop drinking. Please help. Sometimes it's just, please help. You know, but, uh, you know, so I, I'm ready for God to take away all this bullshit in sex. You know, and I'm going to ask him to the best of my ability to, to get rid of these defects of character. Made a list of all persons we had harmed, became willing to make amends to, to them all. Well, yeah, how many people want to get that divorce? Their list is very short. My wife, my kids, my job, you know, but it's honest. They haven't dug deeper. They, you know, just walked in the door, but so their list is short. You know, that's true, but it is a list, you know. You know, and a lot of them, uh, and I know you all know the people are like, man, I've got like four days sober. I want to tell my wife all my indiscretions and everything. I want to make things right because she's about to kick me out of the house. I want her to know all the stuff. Blah, 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 blah. You're like, dude, don't do a damn thing because you're about to screw some shit up. Just shut up. You ain't there yet. Don't do that step. You know, when you're ready and you've done the other ones first in order, then, uh, you know, then you'll be ready to do that. Uh, nine, may direct amends such people wherever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others. You know, that kind of falls into number eight, doesn't it? You know, I really want to make these amends, and uh, I want to do them directly right away to my wife and kids and job and everybody else, but it would injure them, you know, and uh, mess things up. And there is that moment of clarity where they're like, I want to make it better, but I can kind of see that it won't go well. Uh you know, so really the best direct amends that they could do is just by actually sitting in the room and listening. And uh, the living amends, that's the best they can pull off. Continue to take personal inventory, and when they're wrong, promptly admit it. Throughout the course of the meeting, guaranteed they're going to be sitting there listening to people, and they're going to start growing that list as they start listening, you know, of uh, you know, their personal inventory, because they're, you know, of course, sobering up. Uh, you know, and when they're wrong, they're promptly admitting it. They're doing the best they can. So I'll do prayer meditation to improve our conscious contact with God as we understood him, praying only for knowledge of his will for us and the power to carry it out as we understood him. Okay. Keep in mind, hot off the grill, fresh off the streets, however you want to call it, you know, what they understand to be God is uh, very minimal. And uh, some people have like a church background, but still they haven't had a relationship with God. Not a real one. It's been uh, more by proxy. You know, I hang out with churchy people. I talk the churchy talk, 
you know, wear the suit and everything. And I show up to, and sing very loud in choir, so I've got to be good graces with the Lord. But that's more for show. That's not really the personal part. You know, but again, they're improving their conscious contact as they listen, you know, and they hear the stories. And God is using the people in the room to talk to them, you know. And so the, the meditation would be as they're sitting there and they're listening to all these things and they're thinking about it and they're absorbing all this stuff. You know, like I said, I mean, this, these are not being done based on, hey, I've been coming for a long time. I've been working the steps with the sponsor, been doing this. This is, I'm working with what I got having just walked in the door. So literally, I mean, they're doing the stuff to the best of their ability, just not thoroughly you know, through sober glasses like we would do, but they're still doing it. And number 12, having had a spiritual awakening as a result of these steps, we try to carry this message to alcoholics and to practice these principles in all our affairs. Well, if they made it to the end of the meeting without leaving, they had a spiritual awakening of some sort. In fact, they even had that spiritual awakening when they walked in the door, you know, because something compelled them. To come in there on their own free will you know it, it doesn't matter what it is you know some people say the spiritual awakening is like the burning bush and you know all this but you know i point out that the human eye can see a candle a mile away so while i'm looking for this burning bush of an awakening and god speaking to me and parting the seas and the clouds and sunshine beaming right on the forehead i'm missing the little candles and uh, maybe that's all they can see right now. But to carry the message to the alcoholic, guess what? That newcomer is going to tell me what, what it's like out there. That alcohol is still out there trying to kill me. You know, I can see it in their eyes. When they do share, I can hear it in their voice and in their tears. You know, they're spreading the message. You know, that... Uh, She's trying to kill us. Probably the best message that could be passed to anybody else uh, in the uh, in, in the program. Doesn't matter how long you have. And um, also, you're not alone, which is the other powerful message of AA. And to practice these principles in all our affairs, they can do it for an hour. They can sit there. They can shut up. They can contribute. They can participate. Whatever. You know, they're doing what they can. So, while we're beating ourselves up that we have no hope, we got the rawest, purest hope walking into there that we hope that this is going to work. So we're not hopeless. In fact, we got more than enough. Which goes to the 12 and 12 part where it says about willingness, you just need to crack the door open a little bit. And uh, you'll find you have ample room to get through. So, don't worry about it. You know, go to a meeting, participate in your own recovery realize that uh, you can get sober too if you choose to.